The research I'm doing at the moment is focused mainly on what we call the defensins, and these are the body's own antibiotics. And it's clear that they have a really important role in defending the body against infection. But they're also important, and they seem to signal to other components of the immune system. So as well as killing the bacteria directly, they shout to the rest of the immune system, if you like, we've got a problem here, let's try and sort it out. OK, Sophia, this is normal mouthwash. What we do, we sample DNA, essentially, because we're looking at the DNA level and the genetic variation there. And we get hold of them mostly by mouthwash. It turns out that if you have just ordinary, um, you know, own brand mouthwash that you would use every morning to um, clean the teeth, if you rinse your mouth out with that and spit into a tube, there's enough cells that um, fall off the buccal cavity, the, the inside surface of your mouth, to get quite a bit of DNA from, and certainly enough for our needs. And of course, that's much more popular than taking blood, because there's no needles involved or anything like that. It leaves you with a nice, fresh taste in the mouth as well. I'm looking at the genetic variation of the defensins. Normally, for most genes, what we expect is you have two copies in every cell. So you have one from your mum and one from your dad. But for these defensins, these body zone antibiotics, it turns out they vary in copy number. So there are people walking around with nine, ten copies, and they're clinically normal, they're clinically healthy, they're fine. But we've done a larger study where we've looked at individuals with um, psoriasis, which is an inflammatory skin disease, and some healthy volunteers and compared their defence in copy number. And it turned out that the people who had psoriasis generally had a higher copy number for these antibiotics than the individuals who didn't. And so that suggested to us that, yes, it may be good to have a higher copy number for infectious disease, you'd be more resistant to it, but the problem being that you might be increased susceptibility to inflammatory disease. And so it's, there seems to be a balance going on here. And ideally, you want somewhere in between. Really, the reward um, is actually comes from finding things out. Um, that's, that's the excitement for me. And secondly, it can be applied as well. So yes, you're finding something out that's very interesting, that's pure science and satisfies your curiosity. But you can also apply it, and hopefully it might end up doing some, some good in the world as well. So you might be helping people who have certain diseases or things like that. And generally, we're building the, our uh, knowledge of who we are and where we are and, and you know, potentially where we're going.